you know, Walmart's going to continue to test things. They want to, you know, be the best, continue to be the best. And it's not just like Amazon. It's not just like Instacart. It's not just like Target. They're right. all individual channels and they're all different. And you need to have a different strategy for each. And that's something that's been a huge barrier for a lot of customers that I talk to on a regular basis. And they're killing it on Amazon or they're killing it on Instacart and struggling with why they're not killing it on Walmart. And that's where the strategy, it's not a necessarily apples to apples. It needs to be looked at a different way. Hello and welcome to White Label Advice. I am here. I am Brooke McNeely. I am the VP of Marketing. I am here with our founder and chief growth Hello. officer, Eric Howerton. And we are here with our esteemed guest, the VP of Client Relations, Lane Carruth. Lane, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? What do you do at White Spider? All that good stuff. Let us get to know you. Well, hello. First off, thank you guys so much for asking me to join, to join today and letting me be a part. So I am, I've been with the company six years as yep. of this month and super excited, um, work in kind of a hybrid, hybrid role in sales as well as really growing our existing clients and understanding what business objectives they have and what challenges they face. And before White Spider, I've been on the agency side of the business, working at all the big agencies, leading Tyson, Hershey's, Clorox, Procter & Gamble, just have a love of building relationships and CBG and Walmart. That's really exciting. Eric? What? You haven't said anything yet. No, so I haven't. I'm, I'm just know, like I'm waiting, like, what? I'm just, waiting I'm for wait, the other shoe to I'm drop. I wait towards the end. And oh, okay. That's when you really come in there. Yeah. yeah that's when I come in. Well, that's, just really, uh, that's really great that you were talking about how, you know, you kind of um, help clients face the challenges that they're facing because that is exactly what we wanted to talk about today. We wanted to talk about maybe barriers and just things that clients are facing. And so first, I just wanted to start just for people that aren't really sure with the lingo. Um, what is a barrier? Like what is, what is a barrier when it, when it comes to um, what we do? Oh gosh, it can be anything. So Walmart, as they switched to their Omni, new Omni site on September 15th, have started changing their algorithm, testing different things. And that can be a barrier to customers and clients not understanding how search works or if new style guides are implemented or anything like that can be a barrier. So they can't be found when they go in and go to walmart.com and type in their item from a search query perspective. So clearly they want to be found, right? In order to make a purchase, you got to be found. So that's kind of step number one. So that's a huge barrier. And that's something that we can help fix. Nice. So Lane, I got a quick question for you. Yeah. So you've been in the industry oh, a long time, like you're saying. Yeah, I just had to get warmed up. Had to get warmed up. Yeah. Now we're going. Uh, I mean, it, you've seen a lot of changes, right? In the oh, supplier community. Yeah. What do, I mean, what do you see as been some of the biggest barriers from just a human resource side and strategy side and things like that over the last, say, seven years? Yeah, great question. For, for Walmart suppliers. Yeah, great question. So really that shift of it's not just what's happening in the store, but it's really that omni-channel and making sure that walmart.com is searchable mm -hmm. from a client perspective. So for example, when I'm physically going down an aisle and walking a store, what I'm seeing, who my competitors are, can be completely different from the digital shelf perspective. And so really kind of making that mind shift and pivoting and understanding and thinking strategically like that is super important because it is completely different. And then you add in COVID to that. Right. So shopping online just increased significantly. You have pickup, you have delivery, you can still go into store, but that's what makes it omni. You can be able to shop anytime you want, any way you want, anywhere you want. And that's the way Walmart wants it to make it easy for their customers. Um, and, and that's where suppliers and manufacturers that sell to Walmart need to understand all those different aspects and how to win because the strategies are different. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where it can be a barrier from, let's say, seven to 10 years ago, where I was really focusing on shopper and what's in store. That's right. just a tiny piece of it. Yeah, and it seemed like it took a while for a lot of the suppliers to 
take the dot com side or the digital side of Walmart seriously. Brooke, you remember all that. I do. Yeah, I was yeah. there. Yeah. yeah, you were there. I was there. I was. I remember there was there was this guy in like 2015, and he kept talking about how you know we needed to make mega SKUs and all yep. your information needed to be online, or else you weren't you weren't you weren't going to win. And I don't. I don't remember who that guy was. You remember who that guy was, Lane? I mean, mega skews. I, I feel like, you know, it kind of, maybe Howie, maybe. <laughs> there was yeah. Emily, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the Howie guy. Yeah, Howie yeah. guy. Yeah, so, I mean, <laughs> but they, you know, that when, every, like you're saying, everything was really dominantly stores right at Walmart. Yes. And suppliers working in that arena. And on our last episode, we were just talking about how complicated it is about store-based work as a brand working with Walmart. I mean, it's huge business and it's very complicated. Uh, but then in comes the digital side, right? Which had very small revenue, I would say from it in the beginning, but it just has become increasingly more and more important in everything you were just talking about the omni-channel experience now. I mean, it's here and it's real. Absolutely. Has it, COVID, did that, did COVID like kind of push that, like push them over the edge, like make them really realize it because everything went pick up? Like how, like, what are your opinions? COVID, in my opinion only, mm -hmm. COVID just acceler accelerated everything 10 times, yeah. right? I mean, different things that I've read, and again, this is just my opinion and things I've read, is, you know, Walmart had planned on delivery, you know, pick up all of that thing to be where we're at today, it was kind of projected from three years from now. Mm -hmm. COVID accelerated all of that. And the shoppers immediately adapted because they had to there was nothing you know there was nothing else we could do two years ago this time we were on lockdown right and that's where suppliers manufacturers that sell to walmart had to immediately kind of pivot and adapt and not everybody did mm -hmm. and those that didn't are really still struggling and those that kind of found okay i need i've got to figure this out whatever it is and we were all kind of figuring it out together yeah, because like even like March 2020, right? Like yes. February before. This is, yeah, it's when the lockdown happened. Like literally it's two years ago, almost to the day. Yeah, it's, it's it was pretty crazy. two years crazy? ago on Friday. Yeah. Wow. Well, that's, wow. That's, what, a, what a timely podcast. I know, right? <laughs> yeah. But I mean, you remember when we were talking about that, because we were like, no, seriously, you know, Omni Channel series from Walmart's perspective, right? They're really investing there. You could see all the headlines, but it was still from a supplier brand standpoint. It was, you know, I think that, historically as a brand walmart's always been changing in store yeah right? absolutely. And trying to keep up and so what they've done in the past i think over years or decades of working with walmart it's kind of been like hey before we as a brand make an investment in something that walmart is requesting from us let's see how this kind of plays out a little bit right is it going to be a worthwhile investment from a brand standpoint i think that at least from my experience and lane you're there and rookie were too like that seemed to be what suppliers were doing. They're kind of waiting to see if shoppers were really going to take on this whole omni-channel thing that Walmart was was trying to accomplish. But to your point, you know, we knew that we knew that shoppers were going to go that way. I mean, mm -hmm. it just makes sense. Shoppers like convenience. But COVID came in, and it's like literally stores were locked down. Everybody's locked down. And to your point, it's just like it accelerated that. Like in, overnight, you had an immediate demand about omni-channel. Absolutely, very um, clear one. Yeah, like literally it popped up in my social media memories from two years ago this weekend where I could not find toilet paper in the yep. store and like a picture of a completely empty shelf. Yep. And my immediate scramble was, I, I got to go like Google because mm -hmm. I got to find something. But um, also talking about barriers and like digital barriers, you know, where, where, when it comes to e-commerce, I know that sometimes people talk about that they're um, having lack of data and having lack of um, just kind of information um, of what their PDPs are doing, that that seems to be a barrier. Um, you know, like, is that, is, that, is, is that true? Is that something that you, you see? Is it, um, you know, is lack of data a big barrier that people face? Oh, 100%. The majority of suppliers and manufacturers for Walmart as far as like online, mm -hmm. they don't have a clue what that data is or what the sales conversions are, anything like that. And so they're begging mm -hmm. for information to understand what's going on and what the trends are and as things change, what they should be doing. So yes, they want data. They want all the data, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and we can certainly kind of help from a, insights kind of mm -hmm. consultation on that but 
data is super important. Well, and I think we've all been on like the search for the mystery KPI, right? Like, oh, if yeah. a shopper <laughs> clicked this, then it resulted in exactly adding this to cart, and then it went straight into their basket, and they bought it, and then they bought it five times since then because they saw it from this first source A. You know, I mean, I think we're all, I mean, we would all love that point, right? But, I mean, that's highly proprietary information to Walmart, yeah. you know, as we know. I mean, and so, you know, if we could all land on that one single KPI, but what happens is, is I think is that the suppliers are getting more data. And, I mean, Walmart's released a little bit of that too, right, from, from there in. Yeah. You know, you get any more data sources, but you still have all these data sources, but what does it really tell you to do? You know, and I think that's one thing that our – like Ryan and our team does a great job at it does that. and that's a barrier that we kind of help fill for our customers is because they don't really know how to connect the dots because mm -hmm. they're getting data from multiple different sources but how can they draw kind of actionable insights yep. against that mm -hmm. and that's where our team has done an amazing job of really understanding and then being able to put that into specific recommendations mm -hmm. yeah absolutely Exciting. That was my last question is how can we help our suppliers overcome these barriers? Is there anything else that we can do? We talked about, you know, just kind of like just understanding the data and helping guide people and just giving them actionable insights. Um, is there anything else that, that, that we do that helps the suppliers? Yeah, well, I think, you know, one thing that I think is super important uh, is this is not a one and done kind of thing. So it's constantly making sure monitoring, auditing, like I said, Walmart's changing their algorithm they're testing out different things when that happens then you can fall in a search query and not even know it or you can have third parties come in when your buy box so there's a lot of different things to it's really it's a strategy you need mm -hmm. to have an e-com strategy or an omni strategy and you need to be assessing that on a regular basis one of the things i've seen a lot is and I see a lot of clients use this for is just that help of monitoring. Oh yeah. You know the human resource capital is difficult in this industry. I mean it. So there's two things about it. One, it's an easy entry, honestly, yes. in the digital merchandising marketing space because it's so new. It's like I could post on social media, say, "Hey, I'm an e-commerce expert today," right? Because I sold a product on Amazon or eBay, and then we've seen that. You know, so it's really you don't have to have a degree, right? There's no credentialing. Right. Yeah. necessarily but when you get into it the knowledge the the depth of knowledge that people might have that are kind of coming into the space you know into the digital merchandising aka marketing space and how they can kind of put stack all that information historically together to kind of give you more of a cohesive strategy actionable insights that you need to take because what i've seen in digital is that you you know, you, you fix one hole over here, it creates another one over there. And so I see a lot of suppliers swinging back and forth. And what, when they may not think that they need our help a year ago, they've gone full. You've seen this, right? Yes. They've gone full <laughs> circle internalizing interns to hiring all kinds of pros, right? Internally on their team and building out teams. Go ahead. I mean, I know you're eager. To no, you're that. exactly right. And it takes so much time yeah. and they already have so many things on their plate and that's where we can take take it off their plate yeah. for them and not only help them be best in class and be found but also just be more efficient for them and give them more time back in their day to do all the other things yeah. that they've got to do for walmart specifically yeah specifically for walmart because mm -hmm. here's one thing i do know i've worked with quite a few brands that where they've come in they're like hey we're struggling with this problem we have been struggling with this problem for yeah. 90 days and within a test and learn we can tell them within four days what the answer is and how to go fix that i mean that's a lot of valuable time not to mention a lot of stress that's been on the team yeah to take off them so i think that's one of the barriers right is like almost like when do you hire or should you build an e-com omni expert team well, and that's right. the thing too, like Walmart just had their supplier growth summit last mm -hmm. week and Walmart merchants are more and more asking suppliers and manufacturing, what is your e-com strategy? Mm -hmm. And not having one is not the right answer <laughs> and making so. sure you have one and, and making sure you have a long-term strategy is super important too. Yeah. And 
you know, Walmart's going to continue to test things. They want to, you know, be the best, continue to be the best. And it's not just like Amazon. It's not just like Instacart. It's not just like Target. They're right. all individual channels and they're all different. And you need to have a different strategy for each. And that's something that's been a huge barrier for a lot of customers that I talk to on a regular basis. And they're killing it on Amazon or they're killing it on Instacart and struggling with why they're not killing it on Walmart. And that's where the strategy, it's not a necessarily apples to apples. It needs to be looked at a different way. And that can really alleviate a lot of barriers. I think so too. And then the whole, you know, rightfully so from a brand standpoint, right? I mean, let's, if we look kind of go back in time and look at where really e-com and digital sales started, Amazon, Right. And then if you're a brand and you take that particular channel seriously, what, what many brands did back in 05. Right. Right. Started, I mean, you have major brands getting their products on Amazon. And then that team is built out for Amazon. Right. Right. On the corporate level. It's kind of like having a, a Walmart specialty sales organization, but for Amazon and, yeah. and all the marketing assets related to that. Then in comes Walmart saying, hey, we're going digital. It's kind of hard to be taken too seriously in the beginning. Well, right? sure. But now it's blown up into a straight omni channel, which is being taken very seriously because of the reasons we just talked about. But you just said something that's really key, right? Walmart's different. It's very unique. The catalog is different. Mm-hmm. The requirements are different. Style guides are different. The measurements are different. You know, the optimization, the conversion, all those types of things. You're ranking the paid placement, the organic placement. Mm-hmm. Everything's different, and it moves just as rapidly, I would say, as Amazon is on all those requirements and how you, how you like really work that Walmart search rank and and, and the, you know abide by the catalog demands. Absolutely, it Walmart is moving extremely fast right now and constantly changing, and little things that weren't even looked at or even thought about three months ago are of huge importance now, and that's where it's just. It's just constantly evolving. So your strategy for Walmart, it has to be, you have to have one first off. Yeah. And then second off, it, ideally it needs to be different because mm-hmm. it's, you're not looking at an apples to apples scenario. We're yep. looking at completely apples and oranges here. And so what needs to be done is, is different. So I'll say yeah. one of the barriers has been like, you know, after the whole COVID deal has been like, you know, maybe Walmart teams didn't even have a resource for digital or it was very limited. Yeah. Or they weren't even hiring somebody like ourselves, right? An expert, right? That's, that knows Walmart really well. But then when COVID happened, like it became a, a pretty blatant barrier, whole gap. And, and here's the thing I'm, I'm worried about, right? Lane, and we, and we just mentioned it earlier, like if your strategy do you as a brand internalize this? Okay, and so to, to understand what that means, it means do I go hire an executive that's going to lead my Walmart e Omni team, digital team, mm-hmm. and then all the support folks underneath that, right? Or do I hire the leaders or the executives of that team and then contract with folks like ourselves, White Spider, you know? I'm sorry if that's I'm a bit. Ba- no, that's but I, no. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, I think that's where it, we've been in the weeds. We've been constantly yeah. learning and growing. So I would say, come work with us because we know what the right things are to do, and it's different for each company. Really There's is. not yeah. a one size fits all solution. So that's where you know a big behemoth company may be doing a lot of things right, and they only need a little bit of consulting or some software, mm-hmm. and then you may have you know. A company over here, let's say, a pet food company, I'm just going to use that because I love doggies. Um, yeah. it, the strategy just depends on every company. And sometimes hiring a leader to come in and help with that is super helpful. But that doesn't mean that that leader needs to be going in hands-on keyboard doing right. the work, right. which is what we're one of the many things that we do that's mm-hmm. taking things off our customer's plate and addressing those barriers. Reminds me of our subscription. I'm sorry, Brooke. I know no, she's, she's like, I'm like eager, eager to rip this microphone away. I know. I'm but like, this we is such a great up. convo. Yeah, it is a great. It's a great. It's a great conversation. We but, just we can also uh, move in and do another topic at another time as well. Well, it's true. We but, don't want to do 
all of the topics and all of the information. We, we don't want to give all of Lane's wonderful knowledge off in the, in the first one. Don't be one. giving all our podcast secrets away either, Brooke. This is just so. a preview of how Lane, how amazing Lane is and how you were going to keep inviting her back. So so one comment on the last one. Okay, last one, last one. It reminds <laughs> me of our subscription. I mean, it's kind of like when we look at White Spider, right? Or somebody says, hey, send me, send me a one-pager. This is my favorite. I know. <laughs> right. I'm not going to go on this topic. That's a definitely a podcast. That's, that's a podcast in itself. In itself. One, a, the one pager. The one pager of White Spider. And honestly, it's so difficult because of exactly what you said. There's suppliers that are in just different areas or, you know, a, a maturity in their journey mm-hmm. um, to where they may need hands-on keyboard to high-level consulting to just going in and fixing certain problems to just straight-up syndication, you know, working with merchants, whatever it might be. You know, and so I th- when you look at our, our subscription belts, it's kind of, it's, pr- it's pretty cool because we've been around for so long that we've kind of have helped suppliers from all regards, yeah, right? Absolutely. I mean, you know, when we started out years ago doing this, we had a couple of different subscription levels. Mm-hmm. And at the time, that, that was what was needed. But then quickly saw everyone was having a different barrier. And yeah. some people didn't. They had syndication down. They didn't need help with that. However, they needed help making sure that they were winning in search. And so that's where I think I love now how we do have different subscription Mm -hmm. options that are based on what that client or customer's barriers or challenge are so we can address that. Yeah. I remember those first little pieces, those sales kits, right, that we did only have like a couple of things. Yeah, yeah. And then it just continually graduated, you know, and it's evolved. How many, how many pages is a sales deck now? Oh, it's like 100 and something. It's like 150. I yeah. think it's 136 there the go. last time I looked. Yeah. Mm-hmm. See, that's great. That's how many solutions we have for you. <laughs> that's right. That's right. 136. <laughs> did we answer enough barrier questions? I think so. I, I think, think we did. This is, this is great. Barriers. And there is, there's so many more, but let's save it for another day. I do want to say one thing, though. Okay. This is, okay. Oh, gosh. For real, the last. This is the, the end. Uh, the end. Be, but I think that here's something that's uh, that is at least in my heart, and I think it's shared with the company too, because we wouldn't be where we are today without this, right? There is a the suppliers. There is a, a a big market that needs a lot of help. Yeah, I mean they really do, specifically at Walmart, and actually Walmart needs help. You know, I often say like, I mean, there's no no company that's too big that doesn't need help, right? And I and I'm. I'm honored that we've shared that journey to, to help Walmart out and help suppliers out. But the thing is, is that there are a lot of barriers. And as we've seen with our evolution of our services and offerings, that just because you don't have that barrier today doesn't mean you won't have it tomorrow. And when you said syndication, I remember a lot of folks that, oh, we got syndication down. But then all the while they turn back around six months later and their syndication is not working anymore because Walmart's made changes that their partners, you know, the, that syndication partner may not have evolved with Walmart. And I mean, so it's just, this, I think that that's, when we look at the ultimate barrier for suppliers, it's the, the hesitancy to adapt and adapt very quickly. Absolutely. And to change quick, right? I mean, that is it. Well, and, and it's, it, and the, those that are adaptable and flexible quicker, it's yes. just going to continue to be easier for them. It's true. And those that are slow to adapt, it's just going to be harder and harder to catch up. It's very true. And once it a, is very true. And when, that's when, definitely the ender. When merchant, I love it. When Walmart or a merchant like says, hey, this is new, guests. like Project Glass. <sighs> like if you're just kind of like, well, let's wait and see how this is going to pan out. No, you need to get on it. When they, you know, another example, just in the last few months, when they stopped Rich Media for a while, but they're confidently saying it's coming back. Right. It's like, take that time and build your asset library up so you, when it launches back out, you're hammering out. Like, that's the speed. When they say they want quality scores or they want style guides or they want this and that at a certain way, you got to react really quick. you gotta, you got to be progressive about digital. 100%. One of my number one recommendations is never going to be sit back and wait and see. That's right. That's, 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 which was so different than what it used to be. When you, when you could do that on the brick and mortar side, right? right? But you can't do that now. And that's mm-hmm. where it's good, you know, test the waters a little bit. You know, there's yeah. different kinds of test and learns mm-hmm. that you can do. But wait and see is not a good approach. Agreed. And I agree. Yeah. 
I've seen it. I've seen that cash. That's for your podcast purposes. <laughs> Wait and see. Your question in the beginning was, what are the barriers? What are the suppliers? barriers? The barrier that I, I mean, after this conversation, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, really a barrier for suppliers has been kind of, has, has been a little bit too slow on the, on the go. Like just, and, and you know, a hesitancy is I a big barrier. Completely agree. Barrier. No, I completely agree. Okay. All right. Yay. 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 No. (laughs) Well, thank you, Lane, for being here today.